सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू बाई फार द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड क्रिटिकल वीडियो ऑफ दिस इयर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट आई सी एच जी सी पी गाइडलाइंस एंड वी हैव द लेटेस्ट ए सिक्स आर थ्री अमेंडमेंट इफ यू आर अ क्लिनिकल रिसर्च प्रोफेशनल यू अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस एंड क्रिटिकलिटी ऑफ आई सी एच जी सी पी गाइडलाइंस एंड इफ यू आर अ फ्रेशर देन दिस पर्टिकुलर अपडेट टू आई सी एच जी सी पी वुड प्ले एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल वेन यू आर अपेयरिंग फॉर योर नेक्स्ट इंटरव्यू सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी फर्दर टाइम लेट्स डाइव इन टू इट Now let us look upon what are the focus areas of this session. First, we'll look into ICH GCP fundamentals, where we will look at ICH GCP guidelines origins and all the revision that have occurred till date. Next, we'll be focus on the key changes that have occurred in the form of E6 R3 guidelines, and finally, we'll look at what is the impact of E6 R3 guidelines and understand the draft suggested and how it can impact the future of clinical trials. so first and foremost let us understand ic gcp fundamentals because there are a lot of professionals and even fresher student who request to know the exact origin of ic gcp and what exactly it denotes so let's look into it so when it comes to ic gcp so ic gcp gives a guidelines called as good clinical practices and this particular guidelines is an internationally agreed standard for conduct design and reporting of the clinical trial so whenever you conduct a clinical trial ic gcp is the global standard for clinical trial design conduct and reporting next thing is when it comes to ic gcp e6 so e6 stands for the clinical trial conduct principle okay and what does this e6 principle describe it describes the responsibility and expectation of the various stakeholders involved in clinical trial next it will cover all the aspects of monitoring reporting and archival of the clinical trial and finally it looks upon all the essential documents and the investigator brochure and other documents that are involved in clinical trial so all the principle related to the conduct of the clinical trial would encompass in e6 principle then we have e6 r2 so there was a revision to so it is e6 r2 addendum this r2 addendum contain the integrated addendum to encourage the efficient approach to good clinical practices as well as to ensure that the human subjects are protected very well and the updated standards for electronic records so now we have the e6 r3 addendum okay the draft guidelines so you have to know what happened in e6 r2 also okay this could be one of the most uh, important question when it comes to differentiating between e6 r2 and r3 so this was uh, regarding ic gcp fundamentals now we will also look briefly upon ic gcp guidelines so ic gcp has its origin in food and drug act of 1906 followed by both the world wars as you can see here and then came the famous nuremberg code okay it was based on the infamous uh, nazi uh, trials or the nuremberg trials then the nuremberg code laid the foundation of ethical conduct of clinical trial which was followed by declaration of helsinki then it lead to requirement for unified standard for conducting clinical trial globally for which in 1990 ich was formed and after 1990 in uh, 2001 as well as in 2005 we had directives we had guidelines published in 1996 okay and it was followed by that and latest in the year 2016 we had the e6 r2 amendment okay so the last amendment was e6 r2 in 2016 now in the year 2023 in this particular year in the month of may they have put a draft for e6 r3 addendum okay so what we'll be focusing on is the r3 addendum to ic gcp guidelines now let us see what are the key changes in e6 r3 draft okay please note that this is a draft guidelines which is shared by ic gcp to take opinions of all the stakeholders across the globe and they have proposed what are the changes that would be finalized in e6 r3 okay which is going to come in 2024 
So now let us look at key proposed changes in E6 R3 draft. Okay, so there are 10 highlight areas which I have shortlisted, which has the most impact when it comes to E6 R3. So first is the risk based approach. So E6 R3 suggests a risk based approach to conduct clinical trial. And this approach shall be taken into consideration while uh, designing the trial, while conduct of the trial, while oversight as well as recording and reporting of the trial. And this particular risk based approach shall be in proportion to the level of risk involved in the clinical trial. So depending upon the risk factor, the trial has to be designed, conducted, recorded, reported according to the perceived risk at a particular site or for a particular subject when you conduct a clinical trial. Next thing is inclusion of the data quality and integrated principles. So in E6 R3 draft, there has been a very prominent highlight when it comes to importance of data quality and integrity. As you know, moving forward, there, there shall be more digitization in the record creation. So the data quality and integrity has to be up to the mark. And to implement that, there is a requirement for systems that are to be ensured in this. So if you see the 13th principle, it clearly highlights the requirement of records or systems to ensure quality and integrity of the clinical trial. So this has been a highlight of E6 R3. Next is there has been focus on informed consent. So E6 R3 delves down into a detailed guidance of process of obtaining and documenting informed consent. Although informed consent is one of the most critical part of the clinical trial, but we have to lay down a more detailed process when it comes to obtaining the consent as well as documenting the informed consent. So informed consent is again talked about in E6 R3 draft. And now one of the most important or shall I say the highlight of E6 R3 draft would be the quality management system. So quality management system has been introduced in E6 R3. And this particular quality management system emphasizes on implementation of quality management system to ensure the quality of the clinical trial. So if we have to ensure a quality of the clinical trial, you have to bring a system which can ensure the same. And this system would take care of the risk management, the monitoring of the clinical trial, and it should also contribute to continuous improvement of the clinical trial. So quality management system have been integrated into this particular R3 draft and it shall lay a foundation for quality clinical trial based on risk management and continuous improvement. Next thing is, and again, this is one of the important factor is increased focus on patient centricity. We have seen patient centric clinical trial being talked about, but now they will integrate into the guidelines itself and it will lay an emphasis on considering the patient's perspective while designing and conducting clinical trial. Earlier, we used to conduct a clinical trial and then the participant used to follow the same. Now we will also focus on what is the patient perspective? What are his requirement while designing as well as the conducting of clinical trial? So patient centric approach has been documented in this draft. Now looking at the sixth point, it would be the emphasis on safety reporting. Now, as you know, we see a lot of documents for uh, safety reporting in terms of the CIOMS and everything. This guidelines emphasizes on importance of timely and accurate safety reporting because if there is a safety event and if that is not shared timely with other stakeholders, it could impact the other site as well globally. So this draft would also focus on the importance of timely reporting as well as the accurate reporting of the safety events. Next thing would be this guideline lays an emphasis on clinical trial design. So as discussed that this guideline clearly highlights the importance of clinical trial design to ensure that the trial objectives are met along with the data that is generated would be reliable as well as robust. So we have to design trial in such a way so that the clinical trial data is reliable. So we have all the quality management systems and trial consideration while designing and conduct. And this data shall also be robust moving ahead. Next thing would be the greater flexibility. So when it comes to flexibility, this guidelines lays more focus on flexibility in terms of conduct of the clinical trial. And it allows you to 
have innovative clinical trial design and methodologies which could help not only the conduct of the clinical trial but also the subject who is participating in clinical trial so flexibility is an added advantage uh, that is suggested in this e6 r3 draft next would be the electronic systems and data so moving forward as we see we move from a paper based documentation system to electronic documentation system and it has its own challenge so this guidelines lays more emphasis on detailed guidance how to use this electronic system and how that data is to be handled when it comes to clinical trial so the electronic systems and data will be more accurately and clearly described and finally it has strengthened the role of the sponsor this guidelines would clearly describe what is sponsor responsibility what is the requirement as per the gcp guidelines and how the study sponsor should function moving ahead so these were the 10 key areas when it comes to e6 r3 draft and that every clinical trial professional should know now once the guidelines have been proposed there are major impacts on several areas now let us look what are the major areas on which this e6 r3 draft would have an impact on so the first and foremost area to have the impact would be the quality management system now this particular quality management system should ensure the integrity of the clinical trial data as well as the safety of the participant and this quality management system or this particular framework would essentially help us in including the risk management approach the change management approach as well as the continuous improvement this system would play an essential role in ensuring the quality of the clinical trial and help the clinical trial industry to understand what are the elements that are critical and of priority in this particular trial additionally the quality management system would also help on focusing on the quality factors while consulting with appropriate stakeholders so this is about the qms system next would be the detailed description now this particular guidelines would provide a detailed description of all the roles and responsibility in clinical trial which not only includes the sponsor but also the investigator the cro involved and it will lay a particular emphasis or focus on the coordination among all these stakeholders and the smooth communication between them because once you conduct a clinical trial there ha there is a lot of communication required so so that we can share the adverse event the safety events the essays between all the stakeholders then we can clearly determine how this drug trial is moving forward and we have to ensure patient safety also so there is a detailed description when it comes to role of all the stakeholders in e6 r3 next impact area would be the principle based approach so one of the key changes in this r3 draft is the shift from the process based approach to principle based approach so here the principle would take precedence over the process so you have to design a process according to the 13 principles of ic gcp and so that these principles are taken care of before implementing the process and this principle based approach would help in providing greater flexibility to all the stakeholders and to adapt to the guidelines of for certain uh, circumstances uh, or incidences such as the safety events or the sa events so a principle based approach is one of the impact areas next as i have discussed patient centric approach so this guidelines would encourage all the stakeholders to consider the need of study participants and what are the requirements while designing and conducting of the clinical trial and it could pro uh, provide a clear and comprehensive understanding of the requirement of the sponsor ensuring that we have enough systems to protect their privacy and confidentiality while we minimize the risk and the burden of the subject itself so a patient centric approach has been a key highlight and impact area and finally the reliability of the clinical trial data as i have said that data reliability is one of the most critical aspect moving forward and this data reliability would require a lot of stakeholders a lot of quality management systems and guidelines to implement it and this data reliability or the trustworthiness of the clinical trial data would play an important role moving ahead in the future and this particular clinical trial data 
and guidelines will clearly describe how the data should be reliable what are the factors what are the uh, quality systems what are the validation systems and how the data shall be reviewed regularly so that we can verify this data is of a certain quality and we can manage this data anomalies or any errors in that data so the data management is also one of the key focus areas and the integrity as well as quality of the data so these are the bigger factors when it comes to impact on e6 r3 guidelines now in this e6 r3 guidelines you need to focus on when it whenever it comes to your interview the risk based approach what is the process how the quality management system would evolve into a technology that is customized and not fit for all okay so you have to remember all this key impact areas key changes when it comes to e6 r3 and being clinical research professional it is a responsibility to stay updated and have quality suggestion to this particular draft so that moving forward we can ensure patient safety reliability of the data as well as the trustworthiness of the trial that we conduct so i hope you like this video and thank you for watching this uh, till the end please make sure that you share this with all of your friends please subscribe to this uh, channel and help all the clinical research professional and the freshers entering in clinical trial blossom the career and thank you